Ever tried organising your video editing workflow and ended up with more mess than a toddler's playroom? In today's video, we're going to declutter that digital disaster together and we'll have all of your projects moving forward looking clean, streamlined and easy to work with. Let's jump in. Enable dual screen. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if you're not using another monitor to edit with, then you're making the editing process as twice as hard. Juggling panels, losing sight of your timeline, and that constant game of hide and seek with the tool you just had a second ago. It's certainly no fun working with a single screen, but did you know it doesn't have to be this way? Introducing the power of dual screen. Yes, that's right, you can spread your video editing interface across two screens and you should absolutely be doing this. Once your external monitor is connected to your machine, you can open up Resolve and head to Workspace at the top and toggle dual screen on. The interface should now be split across both of your screens, allowing you much more room to work through your timeline or organise your media pool. If you want to go one step further to allow maximum workroom in your timeline, then you can head up to Workspace, click dual screen menu again and select full screen timeline. This will put your entire timeline onto one screen whilst putting everything else like your viewing monitor, media pool, audio mixers and effects onto the other. This is how I personally like to set up my interface whilst editing as I spend 90% of the time in the timeline so it makes sense to allow the most room there. If you ever want to swap around which screen your timeline will appear on, then you can do so just by heading into Workspace and selecting the relevant primary display under this setting here. I'd suggest setting your primary screen, aka your timeline, to the larger screen for more room to work with. Create your bins. In the world of post-production, the term bin isn't what you'd first expect it to be. The term bin is basically another world for folder, and you should definitely be using these whilst editing. You can create new bins in the media pool just by right-clicking and selecting new bin. You can have as many bins within bins as you desire, but just make sure you're keeping it tidy without overcomplicating things with endless bins. A very simple and general structure I tend to use includes having separate bins for footage, music, b-roll, and any other assets. If you have a lot of b-roll footage, for example, you can create additional bins to further break down your media if you wish to do so. If you're more of a visual person, then you can right-click on your bins and assign colours to them within the media pool. It's an awful and good habit to utilise bins in every project you're working. A little bit of work at the start can really save hours in the long run. Tidying up the timeline. So we've got our dual screen set up, we've got our bins all nicely organised, now it's time to tailor the timeline fit for our project. We can right click on the tracks to create the suitable amount of video and audio tracks required for our project. I'm going to add 3 video tracks and 5 audio tracks for this example. Next I can double click on each track name to rename the track to whatever I desire. I'm going to use video track 1 for my ACAM footage, track 2 for any adjustment clips to reframe the ACAM footage, then I'll use track 3 and 4 for my b-roll and animations. On the audio side, I'll have track 1 for the dialogue, track 2 for any sound effects, and track 3 to 6 will be used for the musical stems in this edit. I can see that all the track types are in stereo with the 2.0 just here. I'm going to change just the dialogue track to mono by right clicking on the track and heading into change track type 2 and selecting mono. We can see this dialogue track here now is just a mono track with the 1.0 here. Now if you're a more visual person like myself then I can't stress enough to recolor your different tracks. When you get quite deep into an edit and every single track just has either that same streak of blue on the visuals or a cluster of green waveforms on the audio side, it can all get a little bit difficult to follow. You can right click on tracks and select change track colour to set your desired colours. I tend to keep my dialogue one colour, sound effects another, and then I group my four musical stem tracks under their own colour too. With the visuals, I generally just give each track its own colour so I can glance at a clip and visually know what kind of media it is. Now when we place our media onto the tracks, it'll be whatever colour we set the track to. If we wanted, we also have the option to override the colour of a particular clip just by right clicking it and selecting clip colour. We can also click and drag the different sections around our tracks to resize each of the tracks. If you want to resize your track in a more linear fashion, then you can do so just by selecting the little timeline icon here and using the track sliders here to adjust tracks evenly. And that pretty much covers it. With these three simple processes, I can pretty much guarantee you'll enjoy every single video editing project moving forward. Now you've got everything in place, why not fill up that animations bin by heading to Videos. Videos is the online video maker that can create anything from lower thirds to intros to fully finished marketing videos. Gain access to thousands of customizable video templates and try videos for free today just by following the link in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video then please do give it a like just so I know whether you guys got good value from this kind of content. Thanks very much for watching and as always, happy creating.